So we're going to start with our hands out to the side and really spread your fingers and thumbs far apart. I'm just going to come a little bit closer to the camera. Just stand with your feet quite comfortably close together or a little bit apart, doesn't matter. And let's bend the fingers in one at a time, but keep the fingers nice and straight. So from the little finger to the ring finger to the middle finger, forefinger, and your thumbs go over the top. And then just take a little circle at the wrist about three times and then change direction. And my wrist is clunking, one, one wrist always clunks. And then just have your palms up and unravel your fingers in the opposite direction. And then bend the wrist back a little bit. So this is Garuda work. And again, little finger, next finger. So it's a sort of Mexican wave, if you like, bringing the fingers in one by one. And the same thing when you open them out. So thumb, opening out, and then opening, the, taking the wrist back. And then do a, exactly the same thing with your arms out to the side. So turn the palms up. So let's go little fingers. So try and keep the fingers nice and straight. So you're really curling from that first knuckle, if you like. Keeping the arms still, holding them out to the side, and just circling at that wrist. And then opening out again, thumb, forefinger, unraveling to the little finger, and this time pinning your hands back. So you should feel some warmth and some work going on around the, the forearms. One last time, so from flat hands, palms up to the ceiling, little finger, one at a time, taking a sort of spiraling movement. And then changing direction, two or three in each direction, and then thumbs up, uh, thumbs up, open the thumbs out first, then one finger at a time, and then try and just push those, pull the fingertips back, so it's a strong old stretch along the forearm. Great, let's take the arms out nice and wide. Spreading the fingers and the thumbs far apart, maybe feet a little bit further apart now, and just fully rotating. So you're gonna feel some work going on in the shoulder, but also I want you to, to um, Start the movement, think of it like a spiral, it's like a chain of, chain of events if you like. If you think about your little finger, your little finger rotates down and then all the way up and then when it can't go any further the wrist starts to rotate and then the elbow and then finally the shoulder joint. Try not to have the shoulder joint too far pitched forwards but when you go back the other way you'll notice you get this lovely stretch across the front of your chest and your shoulders will pin back a little bit and that's sort of what we want. So rotating all the way around as far as everything can go. And then let's slowly raise and lower the arms as you take this rotation. All the way up to the top and then all the way back down again. Trying to stand tall with a lovely lengthened spine but getting all around that shoulder girdle warmed up. Brilliant. Our next movement, which we did last week, I think, is going to be taking our eagle wings, as I call these. So you take the arms up to the ceiling, you bring the backs of the hands together at the top, and then you, as you lower the arms, you draw the, um, the elbows sort of in towards your side and the palms go up. And then from the side, there's a very shallow figure of eight movement going on because again I'm trying to get that movement going on in the shoulder joint brilliant and hopefully that feels like it's getting all nice and warm then let's take both arms up to the ceiling and it's the same thing but you're going to keep it on a sideways plane now so you're not thinking about the, the figure of eight Lead with your elbows, so the arms are quite rounded, lead with your elbows and then as you get past sort of parallel to the floor or shoulder height with your hands, you think about the backs of the hands going together, then you turn the palms up and you draw the elbows down. Elbow lead, so it's pretty much what we've just done without the circle of the figure of eight if you like, or you could keep that going in a, in a shallow way if you like. Let's do one arm at a time. So the elbow is coming up, turning the palm at the top, elbow leads down. The elbow leads up, the elbow leads down. 
Think of the, or you could think of the back of the hand, the back of the wrist leading. Try the other side. One side might feel a little bit different to the other. One side might be a bit tighter. This is my, my right shoulder is my tighter shoulder. Doesn't feel quite as smooth. And then for the grand finale of this exercise, some of you will have done this with me before. One arm is up. As that arm comes down, the other one comes up, and they're taking, they're doing opposite movements. So this elbow is leading as it goes up, and the other elbow is leading to come down. Palm up, palm down. One side is palm up, one side is palm down. And you might feel, it might feel quite nice, and I encourage you to just go with whatever you need to do to get the movement done. You might feel like just leading a little bit with your ribs or your side seam of your top. Good, and there's quite a lot, there's loads of movement going on around the shoulder girdle, around the shoulder blades in the back, it is all going on. Fantastic. Let's just take, take that movement, that sideways movement. Think of the side seam of your body, and this is called seaweed. And I just want you to step from side to side and again have that sense of leading with your rib cage. And your body is moving in a side to side way. So from the front, you can see me sort of swaying side to side, I keep saying it. But from the side, you won't be able to see much. You maybe can see that I'm coming towards the camera and going away. But what I mean is there's no, we're not going on any other plane. We're going on the sideways plane, which I've discovered today. I'm going to share this with you right now. This is the coronal plane of movement. And the way that I'm going to remember this, and you're going to remember it forever more now, if you didn't already know it, was we're in the coronavirus pandemic. And if you have your hands out at the side, we're working on the, when you work on the coronal plane, you move on this sideways plane. It's like there's a pane of glass here. So you would be going from side to side, which is exactly what we're doing. If, because we're in a coronavirus pandemic, you're two metres apart. If there's a person standing there and a person standing there, that's the coronal plane. Isn't that amazing? Sagittal plane is forwards and backwards. Transverse plane is around the centre, it's, it's sort of rotation, which we're, we're going to come to all those movements. Okay, brilliant. So that was a bit of, bit of seaweed from side to side. Really good. We're going to repeat this movement. Let's, let's just come back to this for a moment. We're going to repeat this movement when we're in the bridge. And this is our meandering down like a river with our spine from the top of the bridge. So it's that same thing. I feel like I'm leading with my side seam of my top and the, the hips sort of join in and everything joins in. Should feel quite nice. Okay, excellent. We're gonna look at a wave for the spine. Finishing up with a, an actual spinal wave, but starting off with just stuff that you're familiar with in my classes, if you do them regularly. So we're gonna take a chest and then a roll down, followed by a back lift. So just nice and gently, don't need to go too far. So lifting the chest, looking up, arch the back, stick the bottom out, find your legs for support. So you're coming into your sumo wrestler position. Continue to lay your chest over your thighs, your head finishes off last, and then you roll up the other way. So you're leading with the chest, the head finishes off that half of the movement, and then you lead with your upper back, like your bra strap area, tuck that pelvis under, you're unraveling the spine, the head again finishes off the movement. Lift the chest, stick the bottom out, making sure that when you're bending your knees, your knees are going over your toes, fingertips are in, elbows are out, and there's quite a nice bit of support in that, for your, for your upper body, for your spine, with, by putting your hands on your legs. So that's our reg, regular chest and back lift. Let's change that and make it a little bit, um, just change the direction almost. So let's come into some sumo squats and stand. Sumo squat and stand. So it's just exactly where we just were. But this time I would like you to come into that sumo squat and hold it a moment. I'm gonna go completely sideways. Your hips are quite high, high, quite a lot, bit higher than your knees. 
From here, I'm going to take my chin down onto my chest and I'm going to lead with my head as I arch the back to come up and stand. And in fact, we can start the rest of the movements from here, from standing. So it's the chin down onto the chest, the bending of the knees. So it's rounding the back. Can you see how we're going in the reverse direction? Then I'm leading with my head, arching the back, lifting the chest and standing. Chin onto the chest. Find your sumo wrestler position, arch the back and come up to stand. So this is a great big spinal wave or it's called a ripple in dance and this we're going to use this this concept quite a few times in this class imagine it's starting at the top of your head and it's rippling all the way through your body and then rippling back again to come back up to the top rounding that back and such a beautiful movement a fluid movement for the spine so now we're going to look at a spinal wave and I'm going to go to my door. I'm going to go to my door frame actually. And this looks very odd, but have a little practice of it. You're all in the privacy of your own homes. I'm the one who's on the World Wide Web <laughs> doing this sort of thing. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to be quite close to the, the wall, standing in front of it. It can be a wall, a door, or anything. I've got my feet three or four inches away from the, my toes away from the wall. And I'm going to take my nose to the wall and then my chin, that's the bit where it looks like you're licking the wall, then my chest and then my hips. And then I'm just going to come back away from the wall to come upright and th that, well, that's what creates the wave. So ch nose, chin, chest, hips. And this basically, I need this to be a little bit lower than the nose there, nose, chin, chest, hips. This is a much smaller, more subtle version, if I come into the middle a little bit more. So tucking the chin down to get the nose, then the chin, then the chest, then the hips. This is just a smaller version of this great big version that we just did. This is much more subtle. Nearly said subtler then. That was no, not good English. Great, so that's our spinal wave. So this is us working on a sagittal plane, on a front to back plane. Let's come back into our let's come back into our side to side plane. Take your hands in front of you, take your arms to one side, your ribs to the other side. And again, we're going to repeat this movement on the floor when we're on all fours, taking the rib, shifting the rib cage to one side. Great. Then shift the rib cage backwards and forwards. Take the arms and the hands in the opposite direction. Shifting back, pushing those ribs back and bringing the hands in to your chest. So everything should be beautifully warmed up now. Now we're going to spiral the spine around and this is working on the transverse plane. So out to one side, forwards, push the ribs back, out to the other side and the hands and the chest come together and then opposite side. So you're taking two great big circles, the circle of the ribs isn't that big but try and feel like it's really big. Um, in the opposite direction and then change direction if you can. So the legs are staying fairly still for this one. Brilliant, okay, hopefully that's getting a little bit more comfortable. Let's take the hips now in a great big hula hoop circle. So warming everything up, Going all the way around, so try and hit all of the inside of your hula hoop. So the sides are easy, the back is easy. Try and get those hips, push them forwards to the front. Change direction. Knees are soft, shoulders stay relatively still. Brilliant, and then bring your feet and knees together and put your fingertips on your knees so that you're, you're bent with your knees and now Circle your knee 
knees around. So you've got a hula hoop around your knees. And the reason I want you to keep your fingertips touching your knees is so that you don't come up and, and lower. So keep the knees, basically you're keeping the knees at the same level. And have a look down, change your direction after a few. Notice all of that wonderful reaction in the ankles and the toes, all circling round and joining in. There's, there's so much lovely movement going on there and just we're just warming everything up. Brilliant, onto the toes and the feet. Now two, I want to see two different varieties of this one. So the first one, I'm actually squashing, I'm bending over my big toe joint. And then, so that's from the side, I'm, I'm actually literally squashing it. And it's quite a strong stretch at the top of my foot. That's from the side. From the front, now my focus is keeping those toes scrunched over and circling at the ankle. I'm trying to take, a, and I'm changing direction, I'm taking a hula hoop circle at the ankle. It's the ankle joint just here that I'm looking to circle as much as possible. There's no weight into that leg, otherwise it would be too uncomfortable. Stay on the same leg. Now push the ball of the foot into, so I've, I've let my toes come out to where they normally are. I'm focusing on the ball of the foot, that big toe joint, and then I'm doing the same thing, but I'm, I'm doing the same thing with my ankle circling around as much as I can, changing direction. But now I'm applying a little bit of pressure, so I'm getting that nice massage underneath the ball of the foot. And there's lots of crunching and clunking going on and all sorts of things going on. But ultimately, we just want to get the blood flow to the area. Let's change legs. So scrunching those toes over. If you've got pins in your feet, metal in your feet, in your toes, which is quite a common uh, operation, um, then it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen, but just do what you can. Try and go for the scrunch over. If you haven't got any metal in there, just try and stretch it over. It's not, this is actually the, probably the most uncomfortable of all the things that we've done so far. Because you get that stretch across the top of your foot. Your toes don't like being all scrunched up, but it's good for them. <laughs> One of those things that we don't like, but we know is good for us. And then pushing the ball of the foot into the floor. Again, the focus is the ankle. But now I'm just transferring my centre over a little bit so I can apply a little bit more pressure. Noticing for yourself, one foot might be a little bit easier than the other, you might have twisted the ankle on one side, you might have some pain in the foot on one side. Try and work with it if you can. Brilliant, okay, so coming back to your feet fairly close together, we're gonna lift, in fact, just have your feet fairly close together, Take your hip circles again, with both feet down. And then I want you to release one leg. Lift it up in the air if you can. You don't have to, but if you can, hold it up in the air. But if not, just have your big toe joint touching the floor on the other leg and try and get the hip going in pretty much the same size circle as you just did. It won't be as big, but it's a hula hoop circle and then going the other way. We're gonna do some advanced running man next. And what I've found so far is that all of this moving about and this really challenging your balance and, and saying to your, your ankles, your knees, your toes, your hips, that you've got all this wonderful range of movement, you haven't fallen on the floor, your leg hasn't fallen off, it doesn't hurt, hopefully, um, it's all good. So it helps you to do the next movement. So let's swap sides, so onto the other leg. Again, both feet down if you want to. Notice how far can you go with both feet down. It's not as wide as you do when your feet are wider because they're closer together now. Take that one leg away. Keep it in the air if you can. Doesn't matter if it touches the floor every now and again. Your focus is trying to get that hip circle as big as it was on <laughs> the other. Um, when you had your feet wide and when you had both feet down. As always, the second direction, when you change direction, it's always more awkward. Never feels quite as good. Brilliant, okay, give us legs a bit of a shake, brilliant. So we're into our freestanding running man. 
So first of all, I want to practice the arms with you. So take your arms into this position. I have got a story about this, but I won't tell you that. Some of the, my class members might remember this, but yeah, it's a little bit like you're sitting in a uh, sitting in a chair and you've got your arms on the armrest. That's that's the idea. So you're creating a 90 degree angle at your at your arms and just a soft fist with the hands. And then we're just going to alternate the arms. They're swinging, but all I want you to think about is the elbow coming back. Don't think about the arm going forwards at all. Think about the elbow back, elbow back, elbow back, elbow back, and back and back and back and back. So it's no, there's no straightening, there's no straightening of the arm as you swing it back. You're just moving from the shoulder. You might feel a little bit of a rotation around the, the ribs, which feels quite nice. When you pin the arm back, you might get a bit of a stretch across the front of the chest. Again, equally nice. Don't change the shape of the arms. Just think about those elbows going back. Brilliant. And then what we're going to do with the leg is you're going to be standing on one leg. You're going to bend the, the other leg that's moving. You're going to fix it. You're going to flex your foot and keep the leg bent and keep it at that same angle. And now swing the leg forwards and backwards same as your arms, without any straightening. So what I'm thinking about here is, is opening out the front of my hip as I take the knee back. So I'm, taking, I'm thinking knee, thinking foot, but not as we normally do, straightening as you go back. Try the other side. So the standing leg is, is bent to keep you balanced. And this is just about getting those that hip warmed up, getting your the sense of movement, getting that right, and without straightening it. So you could carry on practicing that. If that was a bit of a nightmare as far as your balance goes, touch the wall, have, be at the back of a chair, kitchen workshop or whatever, and just practice that on its own. Maybe take the other, the same arm and, and move the arm. But if you can, I'd like you to be on your weaker side, come down into your nice narrow, Squat, so your feet are close together. Lift the leg up, swing the thigh back, swing the opposite, bring the opposite elbow to the leg back. So the moving leg, the opposite elbow is back because you're only thinking about elbows coming back. And then every time you bring the knee forward, you're switching the arms. Elbows back, the knee is swinging, the thigh is swinging. Arms are moving from the shoulder, the legs are moving from the hip. We're not changing the shape of our levers, so the levers being the two arms and the one leg. We're not changing anything else anywhere in the spine. I'm actually not sure if I can look. Oh yeah, I took my foot down. I couldn't turn my head and do this. So think about the shape of your spine. Hopefully it's in good alignment. Your standing leg should be really working quite hard. I haven't actually done this myself much in class. I've been too busy looking at my people on Zoom. And I've just realised how hard it is. It is very hard. If you lose a bit of balance, that's absolutely fine. Just get yourself gathered again. Most importantly is just that you don't... Oh, that's enough. You don't... You don't whew, uh, change the angle of the arms or that leg. Let's go all to the other side. So set yourself up well. Don't just throw yourself into it. Bend the knees, feet close together, take the leg, leg away, bring the opposite elbow back. Remember to keep those arms really bent. Elbow back, that's your only focus. Flex the foot so that you keep the leg nice and strong and then off we go. So there's a lot of movement going on here. It's hard work. It's muscularly quite hard. It's balance-wise really hard. But all of that stuff we've done before to warm everything up, you've got the tolerance there. You've already, already mobilised. You've already got the blood flow to those areas. Uh, yeah, that's right. Opposite elbow back to the foot at the back. That's all you're thinking about because you're only thinking about the elbows going back. Really open up that hip, keep the leg bent, keep the foot flexed. Every now and again I lose the rhythm, it's quite rhythmical actually as well. 
Make sure your chin is tucked in so the back of the neck is nice and long. When you would like to stop, do a couple more. Here we go. And whoa, yes. Brilliant. Okay, I felt that really, really felt that in my hips, my buttocks mainly, because they were, they were the main stabilising muscles. You might have felt it somewhere else, but hopefully that you did feel it and you worked a little bit. So I'm just going to lower the monitor. We're going to come into a standing, a roll down at the end of your yoga mat. We're going to do it four times. So let's take our feet nice and wide, as wide as the yoga mat. Just watch me a moment. So we're going to take a roll down. Once we're down there, we're going to take some hamstring stretches because we haven't done any of that yet. We're going to walk out, hopefully taking four walks to get into your plank. One, two, three, four. Here's your plank. When we're in the plank, we're going to take four varieties of uh, just adding on to this. Opposite hand to shoulder times four. Next time we're going to go hip. Next time we're going to go knee. Last set will be to the ankle. Notice I have to lift my hips up to do that last bit. And then we're walking the feet in. Bend your knees as soon as you need to. Bring your toes to your ankles. No, your toes to your wrists. That's the one. And then rolling up and then we're going to reverse it back down again. Okay? Just to give you an idea. If you just want to hold the plank, that's absolutely fine rather than doing the rest of it. So if you haven't got a yoga mat, have an imaginary one. And then from here, we're taking the chin onto the chest, keeping the pelvis in neutral. Let those arms hang, soften the knees. This isn't necessarily about keeping the legs straight all the time just yet. Nod your head, shake your head. Straighten your legs and soften your knees again, about four times. Stretching the backs of the legs, stretching those hamstrings. The idea is to try and keep your hands where they were all the way through. And then we're walking out. Bend your knees if you need to, otherwise keep the legs straight if you can. Your heels will come off, that's absolutely fine. Four walks, lower your hips down into that plank position. From here, opposite hand to shoulder, alternating. There will be a little shift from side to side, that's absolutely perfect. Then lift the hips up. If you can, keep your legs straight. But as soon as you need to bend your knees, that's absolutely fine. Get your big toes touching your wrists and then rolling up through the spine. We're going again. Reversing down. Reverse. Reversing the direction. Rolling down, hanging. Three times, straighten the legs, soften the knees, straighten the legs, soften the knees. Make sure there's no tension in the neck. Placing the hands down, spread the fingers and the thumbs far apart. Walk the feet back into the plank position. Again, about four walks if you can. And here we go, opposite hand to hip. Just four of them. And then we're walking the hands back to the feet. Again, try and keep the legs straight, but if you need to bend them, absolutely fine. Relax your head, roll up through the spine. Here we go, and again, just two more. Rolling down, maybe a little bit faster this time, a little bit more fluid. Unravel twice, straighten your legs, soften your knees. Straighten your legs, soften your knees. Straighten your legs. See if you can keep your legs straight. One, two, three, four walks to come into the plank. This time, we're to the knee. You have to lift your hips up a little bit and replace your hand. To the knee, replace your hand. Lift your hips, drop your hips down. Lift your hips, drop your hips down. Lift your hips, walk the feet in. It's a wonderful calf stretch if you can manage to keep those legs straight. It will depend on your hamstring length though, so bend your knees if you need to, rolling up. Last one, here we go. Chin onto the chest, round in the back, unravel that spine all the way down. Hands to the floor, bend the knees, walk the feet back. Roughly four walks. Okay, last one, biggest movement. 
lifting, reaching for the ankle. Reach for the ankle, opposite hand, or the knee, or the hip, or just hold the plank if that's where you are today. It's absolutely fine. Let's walk the hands back to your feet, keeping those legs straight. Let's walk the hands back out again and lower both knees slowly with control to land at the same time on your mat. Great job. Okay, this is where I'm going to go slightly on this angle for a change. Great, so on all fours, let's take some shoulder rolls because we haven't actually done any shoulder rolls today. <laughs> And I always do shoulder rolls. So hands are underneath the shoulders, knees are underneath the feet. And here's a lovely rolling around with the shoulders. So the arms stay fairly straight. Three or four in each direction. Allowing your rib cage to drop down. Brilliant. And then coming back to our theme of waves and ripples or, or yes yeah, spirals but so this is a wave or a ripple sit bone circles which we I've called sit bone circles um, but actually I've always thought of it as more of a wave so from your square box position tuck your pelvis under really tuck your pelvis under and feel that wave coming up through the spine so the middle back the upper back and then finally your head relaxes down and then you take the hips back towards the heels, staying rounded, and then you swoop through and you allow your pelvis to unravel. And the, the, the whole idea of this is to flow. You know how waves have a perpetual movement, don't they? They, 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 never, they never stop. There's always that ebb and flow. So thinking about the pelvis, tucking under, taking the pelvis into the two different directions and allowing it to flow and move. Let's go in the opposite direction. Take the hips back, tuck the pelvis under, come up and over. And then bend the arms as you swoop through. Hips are back, you tuck up and under and over. Sure. There, tuck under, and rolling through. Brilliant. So just while you're watching the next movement, just have a little twiddle with the, with the wrist. Maybe do those Mexican wave type things again with the hands. Nice thing to do, but just get some strength going in the, in the fingers and the wrists. Thinking about the, taking the rib cage from side to side, as we did earlier. So if I face forwards, um, and we will do this. I want you to look at my, so we're taking the rib cage from side to side. So from above, you're sort of making a crescent shape, if you like. But look at my shoulders. My shoulders and my hips are staying on the same level. They're staying parallel to the floor. Once we've done a few of those, I, I want you to lift. So you're going to transfer over to one side. So the same side hand and knee. And then you're going to really lift, focus on lifting out of the floor. And now my shoulders and my hips are at this wonderful jaunty angle. I'm lifting the leg off the floor as well. And try and balance there if you can. Lower back down, transfer over to the other side. So I'm lifting, 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 lifting. Look at the angle of the shoulder girdle. Same thing is happening at the hip. Arms stay fairly straight. So shifting. So let's, the first thing is to just take the ribs from side to side. And notice and feel that your shoulders are staying in the same alignment with each other. They're staying on the same level. And if we were to take this into a full spine circle, you would just add the lifting up and the dropping down of the rib cage. Maybe do a couple of those in each direction. Rude not to while we're here. Good. And then we're going to go over to one side. So I'm going away from the camera. I now want my, my balance to be over that hand and that knee and then I'm lifting the other hand. I'm lifting the shoulder up. The hip is going with it as well and then I'm lowering 
and shifting over. So my ribs aren't sticking out now. I'm taking the whole side of my body over to, the, to one side and lifting shoulders and coming down again. Or face forwards again so you can see. Over to the side, lift, lift, lift. And it's almost like um, you've got a spider's web coming out of your fingers, your, or your, your, your spider and you're spinning your web. And this hand is like sticky. It's lifting off the floor, but you don't, almost don't want to lift off. The heel of the palm comes up first, then the fingertips are still reaching towards the floor. So the arms stay nice and straight. And I feel like I could balance here for quite a long time. I feel pretty secure. It feels quite nice. And we're rotating around the spine, same side. And again, there's that nice work going on in the, in the hips. Fantastic. Let's sit up and sit forward. So last week we did some nice footwork. We're going to repeat that footwork, but just from this seated position. So sitting up really nice and tall, feet and knees are hip width apart. Just put that back there. Um, and flex your feet. Take your hands behind you and go up onto your up onto your fingertips really with your thumbs facing forwards. And there's a very slight lean back. You might not have a lean back, it might just be the length of my body. But, uh, but the main focus and the reason we're on our fingertips and we've got the thumbs facing forwards, is to open up the chest here. So open up the chest and sit up really nice and tall. Now from here, your, your feet, your heels stay still, but you are going to move your ankles and your toes. So you're extending your ankles forwards. The legs will start to straighten, but your heels don't go anywhere. Extending your ankles, so you're stretching them out, but leaving the toes still pulled up, if you like. Then you're pointing the feet, pointing the toes fully, so you're getting that nice stretch across the top of your insteps. Then you're plucking the cherries, so you're keeping the toes scrunched underneath, and as you bend your flat, oh, well, Hannah is quite crampy. <laughs> as you uh, pluck the cherries and stay in that foot fist position, um, you bend the knees and you bring the feet back again. So extending at the ankle, toes last, and then scrunch to come back in. So my heels are staying where they are, but the legs will straighten a little bit, and that's absolutely fine. So the reason the crampy, crampiness happens, not a very good word, but the reason that happens is because when I scrunch my feet, when I create that fist with my foot, I'm using all the muscles underneath the soles of my feet, which never really get much airing, to be honest. So this is brilliant. If you can, let's reverse it. So flexing the feet, go into the scrunch by keeping your feet, your ankles flexed. Scrunch your toes over, so work, switch on all those muscles underneath your foot. Now sort of dig your toes into the, towards the floor and then curl the toes up to return to the start. Scrunch, dig and lift. Scrunch, dig and lift. So we're going in the other direction. And again, for me, it feels, it's a, it feels like a wave. <laughs> Might not feel like a wave for you. But if you can, and then see if you can go one at a time. We did try the other day going one at a time, doing the opposite things, but that was really difficult. So just go, go one at a time, as in one after the other. Yeah. Good. And have you forgotten about your shoulders? Probably. Shoulders open, slightly leaning back. So it shouldn't be too grippy in the hip flexors because we've opened up that area. Good, and then you're working on your seated posture at the same time. Fabulous. Let's come down onto our backs. So just taking the hands around the back, backs of the knees and rolling all the way down. So finding your base position, finding your, your neutral position, especially think about the lower back. And then we're going to just bend Bring one knee, both knees in, hug, sort of hug them in, but you don't actually, actually have to hold on to them. Just bring them in as much as you can. Let your feet just really dangle here. 
And notice, and you might just want to, it feels quite nice for me to just have a bit of a rock from side to side. Um, notice what's happened to your lower back. It's probably, it should have, tucked under. And so that your, your waistband at the back, your lower back is pushing into the floor. But it's mainly because your knees are so far forwards, your thighs are so far forwards, and you're tucked in. So that lower back has to round out. So just take your feet back to flat again. I want you now to use your muscles, your low abdominal wall, to create that same thing. And it's, it's, it's the beginning of our pelvic tilt, or well, it is a pelvic tilt, but it's the beginning of our peeling shoulder bridge. So from your neutral spine, so I've got a bit of a gap underneath my lower back, I'm tucking my pelvis under, I'm not using my buttocks, I'm just using that lower abdominal wall internally between my pubic bone and my uh, belly button, that's the area I'm thinking about, scooping all those muscles out and I'm applying as much pressure as I can into, my, into the floor via my lower back and then releasing back to neutral. So if I just take this top away a little bit and maybe go a bit more sideways, so from here I'm tucking under and releasing back to neutral. So this is neutral for me, it's a quite a big curve but I know I'm in neutral because I've got my pubic bone and my hip bones on the same plane. This is me in a pelvic tilt. These muscles that you're using to get here is what I want to try and build a bit of stamina in. So your, your deep lower abdominal muscles. Um, what was I about to say then? I don't know. Uh, no, I've lost my train of thought. Oh, I know. So when you've got your legs bent in to here, Yes, that you'll be in that position, your pelvis will be tilted in that position, but at the same time, I want you to create that position by, by drawing those lower abdominals in. And that's what I was gonna say. So what it should feel like between your belly button and your pubic bone, when you're in this position, it, the area should feel scooped. If it feels slightly bunched or domed, so I can create that same movement with my pelvis i can tuck my pelvis under but if i switch on the wrong muscles i'm not sure if you can see that but i've got this lovely little dome going on it's like i've got a little pot belly it shouldn't be that that dome shouldn't be there it should be scooped so it should feel strong relaxed in the glutes pubic bone is higher than your hip bones this is taut it's like a it's like a drum across the, the front of your tummy and then keep that there I'll come back into a different angle keep that position there so push that lower back into the mat bring, bring those knees in again make sure your feet are really dangling the backs of your legs are nice and relaxed keep holding that lower body that lower back imprint is what it's called and just allow your thigh bone to move away same as we did when we were doing running man when we were standing and let your toe touch the floor. It will touch the floor quite quickly. So I haven't lifted my legs up, they're completely relaxed, that's as far as they're gonna go. I'm just thinking about the thigh going away, opening up at the front of the hip. And notice, hopefully, for yourself, there's no change in the amount of pressure that you're applying into the floor. You've tilted that pelvis under, you're imprinting your lower back, you're holding it with your muscles, and also because one thigh is in, is tucked in. But there shouldn't be any change, no rocking and rolling. If you want to work a little bit harder here, tip tap the, the uh, toes. So rather than doing one at a time, swap them, swap them, swap them. But that might be too much. If you start to feel that your lower back is arching and going back into neutral, then you maybe haven't got much stamina here. And to be honest, a lot of people haven't got a lot of stamina to hold this position. It's really, it's quite strong. So that's what we're trying to work on today. Okay, let's take the legs up, the feet up. So lift your feet up. So come into a more traditional tabletop, classical Pilates exercise. But I want you to, so if you were um, quite advanced in your Pilates, you would probably be able to do this in a neutral lower back. But I don't want you to be in a neutral lower back or lower or pelvis. I want you to keep maintaining that imprint. It's much harder now, your legs are in this position because the weight of your legs will want to, they will want to um, make your lower back arch. So same thing, this is called toe taps. 
Again, as we did when we were standing in our running man, as we did just in the last movement, don't change the angle at the legs. Fix the legs at 90 degrees. So when your toe touches the floor, it's going to be quite a lot, a bit further away from, the, from your butt than it was just now. So taking one leg down to the floor. I'm imprinting all the time. I've got my rib cage strongly drawn down and connected to my hips. So it's not only that lower abdomen that's working, upper body is working quite hard as well. Brilliant, let's take the arms up to the ceiling. Palms, actually palms facing the tops of your knees. So we've done the legs, now we need to take the opposite arm to the moving leg back. The other arm and leg stay absolutely still, hopefully. You'll pr probably find that they will be moving a little bit. And I can feel my knee, my knee that's supposed to stay still wants to draw in and the other arm wants to draw away. Try and keep it, both of those fixed. So you've only got one arm, one leg moving, the others are staying where they were. Still imprinting that lower back. So this is strong work. It doesn't actually look that difficult apart from the coordination side of it, but it's strong work to hold that imprint all the way through. Good, we're adding on a little bit and making it harder. If you can and or you want to, opposite arm and leg, the arm still goes back to the same place, but the leg is now extending and the other arm is staying up still. And then you come back to here, come back to tabletop. This is called the dead bug. That's only because this position is the dead bug. Obviously, we're not completely dead, else we wouldn't be able to move. So, opposite arm and leg extending away. If you wanted to challenge yourself even more, take, mm, let's take, uh, both, both arms and one leg back. Both arms, one leg. Now, I'm not taking my arms back quite as far as I was when it was one, because there's, there's a tendency to let all that go in that lower back. Keep it tucked under. Super advanced would be double legs, double arms. But now, and again, same thing with the arms. Now I'm taking the legs up higher towards the ceiling and come back in. So I'm still imprinting. I've still got my pubic bone higher than my hip bones. I'm working hard, but it's actually getting quite tired now. So hands and legs down to the floor, arms and legs down to the floor. Great job. Okay, we are taking just one more, one more abdominal exercise. I've just about got time. I'm going to turn away from the camera to show you this. It's called abdominal ovals and I want you to look at the shape I make with my head and shoulders. So you're going to put the soles of your feet together and let your knees drop out to the side. And you're gonna interlace your hands and have your hands at the back of the head with your elbows out nice and wide. So hopefully, pelvis should be in a neutral now. No, we're not trying to imprint the lower back. Lift your head up, look and check that your knees are level and your feet are in the middle. Your feet are opposite your pubic bone. Hands behind your head, bring your elbows forwards into your periphery vision. The shape we're making here is an oval shape with your head arms, shoulders. So I'm coming up and I'm reaching towards one knee. I'm on a diagonal, I'm going up towards one knee. Then I'm trying to lift everything up in a semicircle, a crescent shape, over to the other knee and then I'm going to roll across my bra strap but I'm not letting my head lower. To the knee on a diagonal on the corner, lift up in the middle over to the other knee and roll across your back and then changing direction we're actually going to do three but for the purposes of this demonstration i'm doing two in each direction lifting up i'm trying to clear my shoulder blades are completely clear here rolling and then the shoulder blades touch when you've done three in each direction then you can rest here we go so the idea is that the legs stay still, the hips stay still, but it's tough. Hands at the back of the head, elbows are forwards. Coming up, clear your shoulder blades if you can, but go over to the corner on a diagonal. Now lift up and over into the centre. 
So it's an oval shape, but it's quite a slim oval. Roll across your shoulder blades, lift, go up over the top to the other knee, three times in one direction. Ooh, come into the middle, three times in the other direction. My head is totally, my neck is totally supported in my hands. I'm fixing that upper body position and rolling down. So a set of six and again, if you can. So over to the side, up and over. Roll across. Try not to just roll across and lift each time. If you feel, if both, the, both times you're rolling across your shoulder blades, that's a completely different exercise. That's not the one I'm after. I'm after that lift up and over from side to side. You should feel some good work in your obliques and in your upper abdominals in general. And in the meantime, those legs have had a lovely stretch on the groin. Fantastic. Okay, we are, how are we doing for time? Oh. Okay, let's take a bridge up to the ceiling. So feet are, feet and knees hip width apart. Up into a straight bridge, really try and switch on the gluteal fold so you're opening up those, the front of your hips as much as possible. Send your knees away over your toes. Bring your arms out to the side with the backs of the hands on the floor. So your hands are just slightly lower than your shoulders. And then let's look at that meandering river type movement or the seaweed that we did when we were standing. So keeping your hips up high, just allow your rib cage to shift from side to side. Your hips and your head will sort of follow it. Your head, tend, my head tends to roll in the opposite direction. And then when you've done a few of those, if it feels quite nice, take a meander down to the floor with your hips, with your spine, just taking that wave and that ripple from side to side all the way down to the center, come back up to the top, one more, let's just do that again. So stay at the top for a moment, get the feeling of it. It's slightly weird if you haven't done it before. Try and let the back of the head and neck relax. Try and keep those hips up. So knees go a little bit, don't be too fixed. And then when you've done an equal amount, either side, just gently, so taking about between four and six, maybe eight little meanders down till you come back all the way down. Wonderful, well done. Let's come onto our tummies for the last couple of exercises. So let's start with the legs slightly apart, hip width apart, nice and parallel. Hands in sort of capital E position. Connect your rib cage to your hips at the front. Lift your hips up. Check your pubic bone has got a little bit of contact with the mat. Check your hip bones at the front are equally weighted into the mat. And then just take the tip of your nose to touch the mat. So we're going to come up into a, a cobra, a full cobra if you can. So just first of all, lifting the nose off of the floor so that you lift the back of your head and neck up so that it becomes in line with the top of your t-shirt, if that makes sense. So it's, it's an inch, maybe an inch and a half. We're just getting that head to be in line with the rest of the spine and lowering. Now let's come up a little bit higher. So head in line with the rest of the spine and then try and use the muscles in your back and not so much relying on your arms pushing into the floor to lift up to the point where your bottom three or four ribs are just in contact with the mat. And then lower back down, get the tip of your nose to touch the floor. Remember to keep your forehead parallel to the floor. So you could push down in the arms here to get that lift in your back, but see if you can use your back muscles more especially to this stage. And then if you wanted to, come up a little bit higher. So I'm coming up onto my elbows. I want to bring my elbows in a little bit. So this is the Sphinx. 
Uh, all my ribs are not, none, none of my ribs are in contact with the, the floor anymore. I'm now using the support of my elbows. As I come down, I'm just going to take those elbows slightly out to the side, but go through the, the previous two stages. So back of the head and neck only. Then come to your, using your back muscles to what I call a quarter cobra. And then we're into a half cobra. And you might just want to stay here might just want to lift that chest forwards and then relaxing down. And then the last and final stage is a full cobra and I'm just straightening out my arms to achieve that bit of extra height. If you do get to this stage and you've straightened out your arms or you've lifted your elbows a little bit off of the floor, when you come down, lower the elbows first. Keep lifting out through the top of your head. So this is all about length in the spine. It's not about feeling squished in that lower back. It's lengthening. Think about those first couple of stages. Try and use the muscles in your back before you start to push down through the arms and relax down. Brilliant. Keeping your hands pretty much where they are. Bring your legs nice and parallel. So bend the camera, the leg that's closest to the camera. Bend that knee and flex the foot. This is our last exercise. So this is called a baby scorpion, but to start with, I just want you to lift that thigh off of the floor, lift your knee off of the floor by activating your buttocks on that side and lifting and lowering and lifting and lowering and notice, hopefully notice that your pelvis, your hips stay fairly level. This is quite hard work. I'm quite tight at the front of my hips, but I've actually got the strength, I've developed the strength in the back line, in the buttocks, to be able to lift that leg up. So we're trying to keep the pelvis stable. And then swap sides. Bending the, bending the leg, flex the foot just so that you've got that nice strong position of the ankle, and then you're lifting the whole thigh up. Activating at your gluteal fold, your sit bone muscles, if you like, switching those on. So we're opening up the front of the hip. Brilliant. And then the last part of this, have a little look first. You're going to bend your foot in, you're going to lift the leg up, and you're going to just take it over to the floor behind you. And everything will rotate and spiral around a little bit. Uh, maybe just, let's just swap each side. So bend the leg, lift it up, touch the floor behind you. So you, your feel is quite natural for your shoulders to come up. Try and take it in an order. So it's a little bit like that, the wave, the ripple effect that we've been doing. So you lift your thigh, you lift your thigh, you let the foot go over. That, that rotates your hips your ribs and then ultimately your shoulders and your head will start to follow and then you reverse back down in the other way. One more each side. So really great for the whole spine and then we're going to take that camera leg, again you're going to need to look if you haven't done this before, lifting the leg up, taking the foot to the floor and sitting yourself up. You keep that leg bent and you come into this nice, comfortable seated position, and then you reverse it back down. It's a bit like my Garuda press ups, but sitting all the way up. So you lift the leg, take the foot to the floor, pushing yourself up, coming up into this lovely seated position, reverse it back down. One more of those each side. So I'm, I'm anticipating <laughs> the leg, take the foot. So the longer you can leave behind the next stage, if that makes sense, the better. The more, the, the, just the nicer it feels. So you lift the foot, you take the foot over, then you push up, and then the last thing that comes around is your head. Great, hopefully that's feeling okay. Hopefully you've got a little bit of room. So what I want to do, encourage you to do, just for the last couple of minutes of class, is to have a bit of a play around. And what I'd like you to think about as you're doing this movement around on the floor is try and find something that continues this spiraling movement. So you might want to go over onto that leg. You might want to 
uh, draw this through. You might want to have a little roll. You might want to come onto all fours. But sort of, yeah, just have a bit of a play about, really. So do something, doesn't matter what it is, and then come back down onto your tummy again, and then try the other side. So starting off seated as we just did, and then I'm going to go over, I'm going to sweep that leg round and then come back down onto my tummy. Just having a bit of a play about. It's rude not to, as I always say. So trying to reverse that spiral, coming all the way up. And then all the way down. That one didn't work very well, and it doesn't matter what it doesn't really doesn't matter what you've done. Just have a bit of a play about with it. Perfect. Good job, everyone. Coming back onto all fours from your all fours position. Curl those toes under. Lift the hips up. Push your chest back through your arms, and let's walk the feet forwards to the hands again. If you can, keep those legs straight all the way. Toes touching your wrists, but you could have bent legs, absolutely no problem at all. And then roll up through the spine, unraveling all the way to stand. Whew, that was live at five. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope to see you again soon.